La verdad, ya no aguanto más ya. Me voy aquí, me voy a mudar. This relationship is over. I want everyone out of my house now. I want everyone out of my house now. All of you, get out. Get out. Awesome. Well, it's here. That big Christmas-themed fight that finally ends Danielle and Johan. And no, this is not some sort of strange role play between Santa and the elf on the shelf. This is the crappy end to what has been a crappy relationship. But before we get to that, I want to talk about how we got here. And if you're new and confused by who these people are, I have a video that covers their full story from their Love in Paradise season to their first The Other Way season. Yes, this is Danielle and Johan's third television season, not their first. I will link that video to this video. I feel like I have to mention that because before we jump into the big fight, I want to talk about what has led up to this fight on their current third season. So kick back, relax, and let's watch how this already unstable relationship completely implodes. When we first saw Danielle and Johan a few episodes into this new season, I thought it was so weird how they were introduced. Like they're just pretending to be all happy, playing around on the beach in their intro. My name is Danielle. I'm 42 years old. I used to live in New York, and now I live in Dominican Republic with my husband, Johan. Uh, no. We know that you guys are miserable. What is this? We had recently seen Johan tell Danielle in the tell-all that he was done with her just a few weeks prior. Es fácil. Tú no quieres compromiso, tú te quedas sola, no te cases. Cuando se termina el contrato, ella coge su lado y yo el mío. That scene was intense. I did a quick rewatch of that to prepare for this video. And looking back, he did say the word contrato in his angry rant that I actually thought was a breakup with Danielle. I've had a lot of people point out how translations on this show are not always very accurate. So what was said in the caption could be different than what he meant. So maybe he wasn't necessarily saying that he was done with her when their lease was up. And really he meant he was done when their TLC contract was over. I mean, that's messed up, but that would make way more sense here. Because when we heard his angry rant, I had assumed that Danielle was getting dumped in front of the entire world. That's what it looked like to me. I even made a video about it. But now, here they are on a whole new season of The Other Way. And their intro with them just walking down the beach, it made it seem like we were just supposed to forget all about that. If the show would stop bringing back couples immediately, I might have assumed that they made up over time. Or I might have completely forgot about that scene. But this new season, season 5, aired so quickly after the previous. Which means, yes, that scene was still somewhat fresh in my mind. And that also means that they went right back into filming after the tell-all. So this romantic intro is about as real as Danielle's new hair. And was the long hair supposed to fool us into thinking that a lot of time has passed or something? Guess what? We can tell it's not real. <laughs> So the video I had mentioned earlier covered their entire backstory, and if you want to know what happened in the previous seasons, or you just need a refresher, I again suggest you go watch that. Because what Danielle says here in the next few seconds doesn't explain any of it. I met Johan a year and a half ago while I was on vacation with my family. We got married five months after we met. And I moved down to DR three months ago. Yeah, I'm just going to leave this again, right here. Here you go. So again, just to explain real quickly, they had an entire previous season of Love in Paradise, and then they were in the previous season of The Other Way, and now they're on season five of The Other Way. And I won't talk about the previous seasons too much here, but basically we learned on Love in Paradise that Danielle promised a lot to Johan that she couldn't really deliver. I also discussed how before Danielle even met Johan, she knew her financial situation was already in a very bad place. When I came to Ifa, I felt like I was going through a dark night of the soul, like everything around me was collapsing. My relationships, my finances. And by the end of that Love in Paradise season and going into The Other Way season four, the only thing she really had left of her promises was that she still had a possibility of bringing Johan to the US. But once they appeared on season four of The Other Way, which is called 90 Day Fiance, The Other Way, giant hint there, it became very obvious that they would not be living in the US. So Johan thinks that we're going to live in the Dominican Republic until his visa interview is scheduled mm -hmm. and his visa is approved and then we're going to come to the U.S. when he gets his green card. I haven't said to him, by the way, I haven't applied for the visa yet, but I also haven't said to him, oh, I just applied for the visa. 
we found out on season four that Danielle had filed for bankruptcy and seemed to be trying to restart her life in the Dominican Republic. That meant that the very last promise Danielle made of taking Johan to the U.S. at some point was poof, gone. And season four had exposed the fact that Danielle had zero plans to bring Johan to the U.S. at all. I did tell Johan that I would apply for the spousal visa so that we can live in the U.S., but the more times I go back and forth to the Dominican Republic, the more times I realize I don't want to be in New York. So everything she promised this guy, money, a baby, going to the U.S., those things were no more. So my question when I saw them on this new season of The Other Way was, what the heck are these two doing on another season? And then, what was keeping them together at this point? The TLC contract they had had to be the main reason. So then, if that was the case, what would this whole new season be about? Would it be about the ex-boyfriend Danielle is friends with that Johan hates? Would it be about them breaking up, which I had already thought had happened on the tell-all? Well, I can tell you that there wasn't much of a story left, so there really wasn't that much to cover. They started by explaining that, yes, Johan did pretty much ask for a divorce in front of the entire world, but that didn't actually end their relationship. And instead, Danielle says that therapy has helped them try to work things out. I wear my independence as a suit of armor, and now I'm really trying to learn how to be part of a marriage and part of a team, and that's really hard for me. So now, here we are with Danielle, Johan, and their new dog all fake happily living in the Dominican Republic. Queremos comprar una casa. Queremos tener nuestros hijos. These scenes just felt so forced to me. They didn't seem like they were being themselves. And I don't know if I was thinking that more because we know their backstory or because their very first preview of them on this season was of them fighting. This all on the first few episodes felt like an act. Nothing seemed authentic. We know this couple. Where was the jealousy about the ex? Where were the calls to Baba and the weird rituals? Where was the coconut? If maybe I hadn't met them before, I would have maybe believed this fake happiness thing they were trying to sell, but I was actually having a hard time paying attention while they were acting like this. Her hair was also very distracting. I do see how she could have been trying to make things seem all great with her friends coming to visit, but not even her friends buy the happy act. Danielle could try to paint this perfect life, but I'll see through all the crystals and the smoke. I'm sure she feels like she needs to overcompensate with how bad their relationship looked last season, but we all know the manifesting, bankruptcy filing, gaslighting Danielle, and the whole pivot back into trying to have a baby felt really off to me, especially since we learned that Johan no longer has a job or that butcher shop he opened last season. They are living off Danielle's income, which she didn't want. No matter how she put it, there was no way that their relationship was now suddenly in a good spot. Oh my gosh, look at them. They're having a romantic moment. Oh, I wait, guess. are we, gonna are we interrupt interrupted? <laughs> but the baby storyline is what they pick to fill their airtime for the next few episodes. They talk about how early on they found out Danielle has a low chance of conceiving, but now they're considering a new approach to having a baby. Un egg donor is con un huevos de otra persona. De otra they decide that they're going to look into this on episode five, but we don't actually see them go to the doctor and discuss this until episode eight, that's when we finally see them get all of the information and find out the high sticker price. So $10,500 for my process, and then I also have to pay the donor $1,000. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sería $11,500. Honestly, that probably would have been triple the price in the U.S., like thirty dollars to $40,000. But the reality here is that they're now living off of Danielle's income, which in the last season she said she did not want. She wanted to retire on the beach and have Johan work and take care of her. She says she doesn't have $11,000 to do this anyways, and I believe her. I mean, she probably doesn't want to file for bankruptcy in two countries, right? <laughs> and I got this impression that she was just kind of going along with this. I think she already knew that she didn't want to do any of this fertility stuff. I mean, why would she? I think she had already accepted that on Live in Paradise and just wanted to retire on the beach at this point. So, of course, these two start to fight again. We don't think that the same things are important. And by this time, thank God, the masks have lifted. Once her friends left, we were back to seeing the exact same couple dynamic from last season. Whatever that act was earlier seemed to drop. Because there was less fake happy whatever that was, and now just fake hair. 
we were finally back to their real issues. And by episode 10, with the help of a translator, they actually decided to postpone going the medical route to have a baby. Which again, I think Danielle never planned to do, but that means that their entire storyline that they had for 10 episodes ended in this one conversation. ¿Qué tú quieres? A mí me gustaría esperar. So what the heck did they have to film now? This seemed to be when things took a turn for the worst. Because after that discussion to postpone their baby journey, they start to argue over Johan's visa situation. Hoy yo quiero preguntar, ¿es posible tú tienes un visa turista? Porque yo necesito ir a Nueva York y yo quiero tomar ti conmigo. Danielle wants Johan to get a tourist visa. And of course, Johan wants a green card. Their entire relationship had really come down to this. The goal is that we're able to live here and travel to the U.S. when we want to. That's the goal. We know that Johan had the last goal of getting to the U.S., but the lawyer explains that the green card process is usually for immigrating to the U.S. to live there. He doesn't need a green card to travel to the U.S. temporarily, back and forth like they were talking about. And there's always been this fear from Danielle that Johan was using her to get that green card. I mean, we all have thought that. He's made it clear that he's wanted to go to the U.S. It's a dream of his. And now she admits that she currently does not trust him enough to go the green card route. It's a little confusing when you ask the question, well, what did they agree on when they got married? And even rewatching the footage of their seasons, it's still confusing. And we know that Danielle had always planned to move to the Dominican Republic. She had a lot of financial issues she was trying to get away from in the US. Danielle made promises, yes, but those promises were already starting to fall apart before their wedding. And yes, we did see Johan express his dream to live in the US, but they seemed to agree on Love and Paradise to live in both places. But I discuss in my other video how I don't think that Danielle told Johan about her money issues. So I think from the get-go, she didn't even plan to even take him to the US, at least for more than a visit. Maybe there was some sort of miscommunication there, but I think Danielle knew what she was doing. And I don't think that Johan really pushed the issue at first. He was so laid back at the beginning, but he did say that he had a dream of eventually moving to the US. And Danielle just said she didn't know if it would happen. Yo no sé dónde vives. Yo no sé con un bebé, sin bebé, pero ahora quiero ti. He does say that he is okay with whatever happens and they do go through with getting married. It was like they just got married making assumptions and not really setting clear expectations. But Danielle decided after they got married on her own that she wouldn't file Johan's paperwork to come to the U.S. at all. I have to somehow explain to Johan that we're never going to New York. <laughs> we have a lot to do. Como? That was her whole thing where she said she was going to manifest the life that she wanted in the Dominican Republic. She also said that she didn't want to work and she wanted to retire and be taken care of by Johan. She decided that she would live permanently in the Dominican Republic without even discussing it with her husband, who still thought that it was temporary. Johan didn't like it and they fought, but I still think he assumed that he would get a green card at some point and they would go to the U.S. at some point. I don't know if she like breadcrumbed him into thinking that or not. Maybe she did, but now he's mad that she is truly saying no. La visa de turista eh, no es suficiente. Estoy en mi país, no tengo nada, pero tampoco quiere que yo vaya a su país y, y trabaje y haga, haga mi vida. She's saying no to the green card. She's just saying yes to a tourist visa. I really think that these two tried to use each other from day one. Danielle, who was in a bad financial situation, wanted to get out and live in the Dominican Republic with a younger man and start her life over. And Johan wanted to meet a rich older lady that would take care of him and eventually bring him to the US. I think that these two tried to scam each other and now both of them are miserable. So I don't see either of them as a victim. I think that they played each other and now we are watching it unravel because Danielle now got at least one thing that she wanted, living in the Dominican Republic. And Johan didn't get anything he was promised. And I think that the no green card thing was his last straw. No estoy viendo la, la buena vida de la promesa que hizo Daniel. Ella te vendió un sueño. All of this is true. 
How he responds to it is ridiculous. Danielle made a lot of promises and now he's trying to get something, anything of what he wants. I feel like he thinks he has control over nothing. Like, for example, when Danielle brought her ex around, even though he hated that, she pretty much was doing whatever she wanted without considering her marriage and any decisions, like moving there permanently. She just decided that their apartment wasn't temporary anymore. So, like, I could just hold on to this marriage certificate and never apply for a visa. Oh, that's a great way to start a marriage. (laughs) Danielle expected Johan to just go with what she wanted, and we did start to see him push back last season, but now is when he really starts to push back, and it gets ugly. It starts with them looking at cars. Tu piensa treinta mil dólares está bien por este carro? Se ve bien el carro, es el precio del carro. Johan is no longer just putting his foot down to get what he wants. He is now stomping his feet and demanding that Danielle buy him stuff. And of course, Danielle is not having any of it. Buying a car with $30,000 that I don't have is not an example of a sound financial decision. Yeah, guys, she only makes sound financial decisions because she is very financially responsible and always pays her bills. What's kind of crazy to think about is going through the fertility process in the Dominican Republic would be less than half of the cost of a car. Maybe they should contact Dr. April. Doesn't she own like a bunch of car businesses in the Dominican Republic? I actually think that the idea of a baby was stalling Johan from wanting to go to the U.S. Like, think about it. His family's here. But once they decided that Danielle would need an egg donor, they pretty much said that they could start the process now, like within days. And Danielle had been going along with it, but that really was the reality check. They could start this now. So I don't think that she could just keep it going to stall. And once they really had to make the decision to wait, Johan again went back to wanting the green card, which would be a big problem because Danielle does not want to go to the U.S. Danielle not trusting Johan with getting a green card probably seemed more like a control issue than a trust issue to him. But after we start to see Johan's shift in attitude about Danielle paying for everything, I could really see why he was starting to get so upset, but the way he handles this is just so bad because everything really starts to fall apart when they go to their life coaching session. Johan says he isn't getting anything he was promised, which was true, and her tears about this, meh. She could have just not lied at first and been honest about her financial situation and tell him that she had planned to never take him to the US, but she never did that, so I still don't feel that bad for her. But I still can see why she didn't jump into the big decision of the green card at this point. The issues are the same as they were last season. Daniel wants what she wants, Johan wants what he wants, and those things don't match up. I really don't think any life coaching session could resolve this. The session doesn't really go anywhere, and he tries to say that she at one point told him he didn't have to work. (laughs) Which I really don't believe, unless maybe she said that really early on when she met him. I think that he's already out the door, and has been this whole season. And I also think that him demanding things and acting entitled to things is his last attempt to get something before he heads out too. I still think about that scene before their wedding. And even though she was saying that she didn't know where they would live or if they would have a baby, Johan's biggest mistake was saying that it was okay if those things didn't work out because it's really not okay with him at all. And his attempts to punish her for this gets shady. So I guess a month later, Johan gets a job and supposedly everything was okay for a while. That's until Danielle notices some unusual transactions from her bank account. And I found these, this like one charge. So I go through my account and I see that this has happened multiple times and I didn't recognize them and they were ATM withdrawals. Danielle asks Johan if it was him and he says no. I have to go to the bank and ask them for a video of who took money out of my account. And then finally he's like, yeah, fine. And just like bangs the table and was super angry. So they are married and I guess don't have a joint bank account. I get how Johan would think that just taking some money wouldn't be a big deal, but it is really shady that he lied about it. Like Danielle had to threaten to go get video footage from the bank. That's crazy. So I get why she would be questioning if she should leave or not. And his explanation actually makes it sound worse. He says that there's no such thing as stealing from your wife, which I disagree with, but okay, so then why did you lie about it? Why didn't he just say, 
hey, I'm taking your card. I really need something. And she was also saying that he had gotten a job recently, so this felt really vindictive. They argue over how much the amount was, but I don't think that that matters. It's the fact that he lied about it. Me quiere como humillar por cuatro mil pesos que yo te tomé de tu tarjeta no, sin de permiso. Tu mentira. And his defense is that he says that if he asked her for it, she wouldn't have given him the money because she is a selfish person. So that playful intro at the beginning of this season was, of course, BS. Johan has been done for a long time. I really thought that this would be Danielle's last straw. He lied about taking money from her. No amount of coconuts rolling around her apartment can fix this. Also, did anyone notice that none of her rituals have come up once this season? So when she says, pay your share or get out, I really thought that this was it. This was the true end. In my house, I was fine. I didn't have debt. So go home! Dame mi dinero. Go home! I'm not giving you money! Danielle strikes me as the type who would have left over this. But at the same time, her getting out of the U.S. away from her financial problems might also have been enough to get her to try to stay. And I think that's true because even though Danielle has realized that Johan now just wants her money and nothing else, we see them back two episodes later. That did surprise me. But I guess what's worse, going back to the U.S. and facing her financial issues or staying with Johan? I don't know. Did it surprise you that she stayed? Let me know in the comments. Because here they are, dressed up for Christmas and not, in fact, separated. Danielle tries to explain that Johan lied about stealing from her because he was really embarrassed about taking the money. But all I could think about when I watched her explain that was, man, that TLC contract must have been waved very aggressively in her face. Like, look at her body language. I bet she was packing her bag and a producer was like, here's what we're going to do. You're going to not leave. You're going to dress up like an elf and him Santa, and we're going to pretend like everything is fine and finish filming. That has to be what happened. She does not look happy at all. Blink twice if TLC is making you stay against your will, Danielle. We started a toy drive online where people from the U.S. were able to buy gifts from a wish list, and we would pay for the shipping costs. This was all Johan's idea. But it takes just minutes before this completely falls apart when Danielle asks Johan for his half of the rent. Pero yo no tengo dinero. But he has waited to tell Danielle just now that he won't do it. Dick moves, sir. Esta relación no, no va para ninguna parte. Entonces, a qué lugar yo voy a ir contigo? No voy a echar para adelante nunca. But I keep thinking, why didn't this end when Johan took the money? I really don't even think they even talked about this or he even actually apologized. I think that they just dressed up to film a final fight scene to end this. Danielle has made it very clear that she does not want to support a man. Would she keep Johan around just because she wants to live in the Dominican Republic? I really don't think so. I actually think that she was ready to go back to New York, or at least leave him after that fight. But now, here we are with another breakup. Don't mind me over here questioning if this, in fact, is the last one. He says he's not paying rent, and that's it. If she did plan to try to make this work, there has to be some sort of denial here for Danielle. What did she think would happen next? How was this going to get better? This guy has been checked out since last season. They've only been married for a year with it being this bad, and she hasn't even been living there for a year. This was never going to work out. And I'm kind of surprised that Danielle kept thinking it would. I've given you everything I have. I think that he waited to say he was going to not pay the rent to humiliate Danielle one last time on his way out. This relationship is over. <sighs> but they do pause their Christmas breakup for a second to go give gifts to kids in need. Yes, there was a point to these outfits. And it was to give out gifts to children. But Johan does say that right when they get back, he is really moving out. Johan is pretty calm, but Danielle seems to still be in shock. And when they get back to change and pack up Johan's clothes, Danielle acts so strange about what he can and cannot take. Leave the hangers. I need the hangers. No. No, not the hangers. Bad Santa. Big Ed has a poem for you. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Subscribe to the Kibbles channel. You're my best view. She was so weird about these plastic hangers that he just starts taking other stuff he says he paid for. Those are mine. No. 
You're not leaving with them. No, enough. Por favor. Enough. Por favor. I really feel like if she didn't do that, this wouldn't have escalated. But apparently, one of those things that he paid for was the dog. So he also tries to take that. No! Give me the dog! Give me the dog! Don't worry, when she shuts the door and kicks everyone out, it looks like he escaped with just the hats and not the dog. I was the most concerned for the dog. Get out! I just cannot feel bad for Danielle. I mean, she started this whole relationship on lies. She was never going to bring this guy to the US. She never had money. Did she deserve to get stolen from? No. But was this breakup inevitable? Yes. These two tried so hard to play each other and it just didn't work out. And now it really seems to finally be over. Because on the next episode, Danielle packs her stuff and I'm assuming returns to the US. I don't want anything to do with Johan. I have been wearing rose-colored glasses this entire time. We all saw this coming. Danielle did not manifest the life she wanted, and her friends all knew that this whole thing was just a bad idea. A thanky panky is a man who works at an, a resort and is looking for tourists to come and, you know, provide them with money and goods and visas and take care of them and their families. I think we're getting married next week. <gasps> no. Wait, no, 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 but she was laser focused on trying to restart her life in another country. She lied, she made empty promises, and she married someone whose biggest dream was the opposite of hers, going to the US. Johan thought he found an older rich woman that would improve his life. He thought that if he was patient, that in the end he would at least get one thing that she promised him. But over time he realized Danielle could not give him anything that he wanted. This was never going to work out between them, and this should have ended right then at the tell-all, like I thought it did. <laughs> but that TLC contract just had to bless us with another season of them. Thanks. This now is the true end of Danielle and Johan. I think in the next episode, she finds out that he was talking to other women or something the whole time. Here's the thing, I don't even care at this point. It's done, go home to New York. This is the fall of the House of Danielle in the Dominican Republic. It's over. Let me know what you think about this last episode. This video was long, so if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for sticking around and watching. This will hopefully be my last Danielle and Johan video ever. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye!